It has been 40 years since our protagonist fell into this other world. He is currently engaged in a fight, and he deals a huge blow that changes the terrain. It finally ended today. Yo Seung Wu and three others finally defeated the ultimate demon king. Just then, the goddess Gaia appears before the four heroes. Sung Wu glares at her. He complains that Gaia gave other people good abilities, items, and team names while he got nothing. Gaia tries to make up a reason, but Sung Wu gets mad. Gaia wonders why Sung Wu is abnormally strong. Gaia calms herself and asks them for the rewards they want to receive. The orc asks to be sent to the next battlefield. The cute cleric didn't ask for anything because she already adventured with great comrade. The elf archer asks for the power to travel through dimensions and handle weapons. Gaia wonders what the weapons are for. The elf claims he wants to use it for revolution to help the bullied, weak races. Sung Wu agrees. Gaia then asks for Sung Wu's wish. He already has the riches, power, and ability to travel dimension. He only wants one thing. He recalls eating the first meal he had in this world. He wants to go home and open a restaurant. Everyone is stunned. Sung Woo wants to share the food from this world with Korea. Everyone is dead and worried. Even Gaia comments that the food from this world is the worst of all dimensions. Sung Woo pulls out his sword and claims that it is not fair that only he gets to taste such lousy food. Seoul was a city of wealth and peace until monsters appeared. The emergence of gates along with monsters erased the name Seoul without a trace. A man cursed as he watches the monsters. A woman tells him to protect his dignity. He is Bait Kang Hyo. He complains about working overtime. Huang Ji Hyun tells him that they can't help it due to the strange influx of monsters in the area. Kang Hyok notices a monster that looks like it is being chased. It suddenly rains and Kang Hyok leaves as his cigarette gets wet. He wants to take a break because he is not in the mood. He wants to eat his tiredness away. He later strolls into a neighborhood and finds a simple looking restaurant. He feels hungry and stressed from working overtime. He notices that the shop is closed. However, he still forced his way inside. Moments ago, Sung Woo listed the things he needs. It's not that long after he returned to Earth. As he plans to watch a movie, Kang Hyok forcefully opens the door. Kang Hyok laughs at how empty the place is. Sung Woo menacingly tells him that he hasn't officially opened the shop yet. Kang Hyok acts like he doesn't care and asks for food. The movie fan is pissed off that his sweet time has been ruined. Just then, Sung Woo realizes something. Kang Hyok looks thin and frail. His eyes and intellect didn't recognize the closed sign. Sung Woo cries while imagining that Kang Hyok is not getting food. Kang Hyok gets mad because he feels he is being pitied. For the sick looking kid, Sung Woo then brings out his best meat a dragon's meat. It contains a flame spirit that goes well with juice. He uses grape juice and pours it on the grilled meat. Sung Woo feels the fun of cooking for his first customer. Kang Hyok freaks out after hearing a screeching noise coming from the meat. Kang Hyok asks Sung Woo about it, but Sung Woo tells Kang Hyok that it is nothing. Sung Woo garnishes the meal and serves it to Kang Hyok. Kang Hyok can't help but see Sung Woo as incredible. He sees the dish as amazing and expects it to be tasty. Sung Woo calls it the Ria steak. He tries to slice the meat, but he can't cut it, no matter how much he tries. Sung Woo offers to cut it instead, thinking that Kang Hyok is really a weak kid. Kiel Rias had been the elder of the Red Dragons for 1800 years. Sung Woo easily slices a part of the steak and offers a bit to Kang Hyok. Kang Hyok puts the food in his mouth and he feels something. He trembles and breathes out fire. He realizes that the food doesn't taste good. Sung Woo claims he did it on purpose. He claims it is a dish for survival and strength, which is why it must taste horrific. Kong Hyok wonders what to do with the meat in his mouth. He didn't have a choice but to swallow it. However, his body burns from the inside and he passes out. An hour later, Kang Hyok wakes up to see a bored Sung Wo. Kang Hyok feels mad and attacks Sung Woo. Sung Woo easily blocks his attack. He feels disappointed that Kang Hyok is still weak despite eating his food. The Kiel Ria steak actually has great effects. Kang Hyok gets offended by being called a weakling. He lets out a powerful attack while claiming that he is the first order. Sung Woo casually flicks Kang Hyok's forehead and sends him flying. He wonders what the first order is and looks it up. The first order is a group of the 100 strongest hunters in the world. 
Sung Wu can't believe a weakling like Kang Hyok is part of it. He can sense that the Earth is doomed, but he doesn't want to step in. Just then, he thinks of something and smiles menacingly at Kang Yok when monsters appeared, an occupation called Hunter also arose. The strongest hunters are known as the First Order. Kang Hyok respectfully apologizes to Sung Wu, who warns him not to do the same thing in other restaurants. Kang Hyok thinks Seung Wu is a foreigner who can kill him at any time. Sung Wu then claims that he will turn Kang Hyok into a new person so he can get stronger to protect Earth. Sung Wu starts running his boomer's mouth. Kang Hyok wonders if he can refuse, but it doesn't seem like Sung Wu will let him go. Kang Hyok doesn't have a choice but to agree. Sung Wu runs off his mouth again, and Kang Hyok can only listen and cry. Kang Hyok wonders what Sung Wu's past job was, and he turns out to be a philosophy teacher. He wants to teach Kang Hyok first about the value of food. However, Kang Hyok complains that the steak is not food to consume. Sung Wu gets offended and looks down on Kang Hyok. He instructs Kang Hyok to finish the rest of the steak. Poor Kang Hyok, the young one, keeps complaining. But Sung Wu shoves the food into Kang Hyok's mouth. Kang Hyok can only remember his mother before he passes out. Sung Wu drags the unconscious Kang Hyok somewhere. As he doesn't want the planet to turn into ruins, he plans to make the hunters stronger. Meanwhile, in HQ, they can't get in touch with Kang Hyok. Minoke from the Second Order has been called to investigate the whereabouts of the missing Kang Yok. Mine finds it troublesome, but he still moves out. He later arrives in a neighborhood and uses his detection skills. He immediately detects him and arrives at Sung Wu's restaurant. He easily picks the lock and tries to look for the basement's entrance. Just then, Sung Wu appears and calls him a trespasser. He claims that he will act in self-defense. In the basement, Kang Hyok pauses digging and notices someone coming in. He is happy to see Min save him. However, Mind passes by him and claims that he also got caught. The two continue expanding the basement and Mind complains about how Kang Hyok offended a monster. Min tries to hurt Kang Hyok, but he is out of energy. Kang Hyok remembers that their boss will arrive soon. Kang Hyok's stomach growls and Mind can only sigh. Mind suggests apologizing to Sung Wu because he looks like an uptight person. Later, Sung Wu surprisingly tells them to go. Min respectfully thanks him. However, Sung Wu wants to serve them food before they go home. Kang Hyo complains about the taste, and Sung Wu tells him that they can choose between tasty and horrific. Kang Hyok immediately asks for something tasty. Mine also wants a tasty one, but he ponders the thought that this might be a trap. Mine then chooses something horrific. Sung Wu brings out the ingredients and starts preparing the dishes. Mine is impressed at how Sung Wu can easily remove the fish odor. While cooking, Sung Wu wonders if Mine has a heart or liver issue. Mine confesses that it is a bit sensitive. Sung Wu then decides to make medicinal food for him. Seeing Sung Wu cook normally, Kang Hyo congratulates Mine. Kang Hyo got his food. He munches a bite and he feels ecstatic. He complains about how someone who makes terrible food can also make tasty ones. Sung Wu gives additional sauce and turns to get Min's food. Mine is prepared to sacrifice himself to find out the truth behind his choices. He looks at the food and Sung Wu wishes him luck. Mine worriedly stares at the porridge and wonders if there is uranium in it. Kang Hyok comments on how inedible looking it is. Mine keeps staring at the dish and notices the flow of magic power. He realizes that the porridge is the same as a healing potion. Min wonders how Sung Wu can prepare it so fast. Mine tries to confirm it, but Sung Wu signals him to be quiet. He picks up a bite and he can feel himself being healed. However, it tastes like lead. Mine needs to heal his body. So it is a do-or-die situation for him. 30 minutes later, a cheerful Kang Hyok discovers his comrade totally blanked out. Min's injury is healed, and he can feel his magic power returning normally. He smiles and respectfully thanks Sung Wu. Kang Hyok wonders what is happening and asks for more food. Kang Hyok finishes his meal, and mine asks Sung Wu if he can help with tomorrow's monster raid. Kang Hyok tells Mine that he can't ask casually because Sung Wu is a returnee.
he doesn't have reasons to fight for their sake. He further claims that Sung Wu is not stepping in for their sake or for them to grow stronger. Kang Hyo claims that they must overcome the hardships on their own. Mine calls him ridiculous. He knows that Kang Hyok is just worried that the rankings in the First Order will change. Kang Hyok cutely confesses. Sung Wu now plans to make Kang Hyok a better person. However, Sung Wu agrees with Kang Hyok's initial claim because he is already tired of seeing kingdoms meet destruction. Mine doesn't want to pry more and asks Kang Hyok to leave. Sung Wu tells them to visit him occasionally, especially Kang Hyok. Outside, Kang Hyok feels his stomach aching and complains about how mine can eat such stinky porridge. Min laughs and wonders when he will realize how lucky they are to meet Sung Wu. The next day, the boss monster raid happens. Kang Hyok and Min get their weapons and jump into the fight. The news later reports that the two successfully subjugated the boss monster. However, Kang Hyok refused an interview for the first time because of a stomachache. Sung Wu is relieved that they did it well. However, it seems like it is Sung Wu's fault that the gates appeared, and he is planning to place the safety of the world in the hunter's hands while he relaxes. There's one more week before opening the shop. As he plans to start preparing for the day, he notices something outside. A cute, talking cat appears with a delivery. Look at the cute paw. Aluros are extremely smart, cook well, and have an extraordinary sense of smell and hearing. They also love taking care of others. They are workaholics in many ways and have the best support out there. However, they also induce laziness in people. Sung Woo does remember asking Gaia for one before. He only asked Renato the cleric for putting slime, but it seems like there is also an Aluros. As a restaurant owner, he worries about cat fur scattering around the place. The Aluros claims it doesn't shed its fur, and Sung Woo tests it. Sung Woo then wonders why the Aluros came. It claims it knocked out God. It met the Meow God before, who declined to go with Sung Woo because he is a dangerous warrior. The Aluros then realize that training is the key, and they trained in various ways until they knocked out the Mio God. Sung Wu can now see why Renato sent the cat to him. However, he can feel Klai's and Theo's airheadedness from the Aluros. Sung Wu claims he has already retired as a warrior. Aluros begs cutely, and he gets hired as an employee in the end. The two greet each other, and Sung Wu decides to call it Nabi. At a later time, Mine visits to eat a meal. As he leaves, he reminds Sung Wu that someone from City Hall will be inspecting the restaurant. They want to check if an Aluros is fit to work in the food industry and if they pose a threat. Sung Wu recalls that someone came to tell him to register as a returnee. Mine explains that it is manual to check people who aimlessly enter Earth. Mine recalls that the taste evaluator is also a returnee. While Nabi is sweeping outside, a man appears out of nowhere. Nabi gets mad at the man for surprising him. The man apologizes and wonders if the shop is open. However, Sung Woo is in the middle of watching a movie. Nabi apologizes that it is closing time already, and the man feels disappointed. Nabi then offers to cook for him. The man gets excited and accepts the offer. However, the man asks for kimchi stew, which is unfamiliar for an Aluros. Nabi then starts to cook the meat, but he doesn't know how to season it. He randomly seasons it and the vegetables are next. Nabi brings out an odd onion and later despairs that what he cooked is wrong. The man can see that it is kimchi porridge instead of stew. Just then, Sung Wu appears and notices the man and a despairing Nabi. The man introduces himself as Park Sung Han. Sung Wu can see that Sung Han had a hard time in the other world. Sung Wu wants to make kimchi stew for him because he thinks the return he craves hometown food. He'll make sure Sung Han won't forget his cooking. He starts cooking with normal pork. He tells the Peking Nabi to come and learn how to cook it. Sung Wu continues to cook while Nabi is learning. After taking down notes, Nabi is confident that he can now cook kimchi stew. The kimchi stew is served to Sung Han. The customer and chef totally craved it while they were in another world. Sung Han's eyes get watery as he realizes that he is now back at home. After finishing his food, Sung Han confesses that he spent 13 years in Terra while six years passed on Earth. Sung Han finds the management on Earth perfect, unlike Terra. Sung Wu wonders if Sung Han came back of his own volition. However, Sung Han was forced to return while exploring a dungeon with Banish. Banishment is a dimensional expulsion magic that expels someone from that dimension. Sung Wu finds Sung Han lucky. However, Sung Han has a wife, Tara, and an Alurus. He cries after remembering them. Sung Wu then offers help to send him back to Tara. 
Sung Han gets worked up and asks Sung Woo to help him. Sung Woo snaps his fingers, and a portal appears below Sung Han. Sung Woo is pleased to meet him. Sung Han falls back into Terra. Nabi wonders if Gaia will get mad at Sung Woo for carelessly using dimensional magic. The next day, Sung Woo and Nabi go to Sector's street market. While looking around, Nabi notices something. Sung Woo can't believe he is seeing Haragagas on Earth. He asks to buy it from the merchant, but she claims it is only for decorations because it won't open. He insists on buying it and lifts it in the end. Back in their kitchen, Sung Woo uses his strength to spread open the giant clam. They discover the huge flesh inside. Eating it raw with sauce is enough for Sung Woo to crave soju. Sung Woo decides to make clam chowder out of it. He now wonders what to do with the venomous pouch of the clam, which can be used to gain poison immunity. Nabi is anxious about what Sung Wu will do with it. Sung Wu plans to make a certain wimp eat it as a preserve. Just when Sung Wu is about to start butchering the flesh, Mine arrives at the restaurant. Mine wonders if Sung Wu found the clam in the river. Sung Wu is surprised that her agigas can be found on the river. Mine mentions that there were complaints about loud noises coming from the sewers. Based on the hunter's investigations, there was a small dimensional fissure. It means that a gate might open soon. Nabi later serves the clam sashimi. Mine claims that a special task force has been dispatched already. No wonder Kang Hyok is nowhere to be seen. Sung Wu finds the coincidences weird lately, like someone coming back to Earth and Haragias appearing in the rivers. The species that eat Haragigas like snacks are the Giganti, which are over level 90. Sung Wu realizes that it might be his fault. Meanwhile, Kang Hyok complains that he is being dispatched to the sewers instead of being broadcasted in the spotlight. Ji Hyun also wonders when they will be on standby. Just when she tries to talk to Kang Hyok, the ground shakes and it is obviously an outbreak. Everyone gets ready and they check the gate's rank. Ji Hyun falls to her knees upon discovering that it is overranked. She wonders if their city will also disappear without a trace. Kang Hyok reminds her to use a stabilizer and hold out. He offers to sacrifice himself to use the stabilizer inside. He tells Ji Hyun to look for the warrior's restaurant and explain everything to the owner. They can only survive with his help. Kang Hyok orders her to move, and Ji Hyun leaves. Despite acting tough and carefree, Kang Hyo can't help but tremble in fear. He orders the others to handle the ones that will come out, and he will go inside by himself. Kang Hyo goes inside by himself. Kang Hyo goes inside try to hold out against the monsters. A huge monster tries to trample them over, but someone comes to save them and kill all the monsters. Sung Wu appears as the others are speechless, seeing the monsters dead. The soldiers wondered what just happened. Sung Wu enters the gate. Meanwhile, Kang Hyok hides after putting up the screen while the Gigantes are walking toward the gate. The Gigantes are wondering why the gate is not getting bigger. They start breaking the screen instead. Kang Hyok prays for Sung Wu to come. While the giants are moving around, debris flies toward Kang Hyok. The giants wondered what they just heard, and they found Kang Hyok. He tries to fight but his bullets are ineffective against the giants. Just when Kang Hyok is going to get squashed, Sung Wu appears and unsheathes his sword. His aura is enough to get the attention of the giants. Sung Wu easily cuts all the giants into pieces, and Kang Hyo can't believe he offended such a monster before and live. Sung Wu finds him and hits him for hiding. He wasn't planning to kill the Gigantes, but it can't be helped. He takes the artifacts and lifts the slacker with him. He throws Kang Hyok outside, and everything is now handled perfectly. Sung Wu immediately goes back to his restaurant, and Ji Hyun appears to ask for his help. Sung Wu tries to hear her first. Sung Wu finds out that Kang Hyok ordered Ji Hyun to ask for his help before heading inside the gate. He can only laugh and see Kang Hyok in a new light. Sung Wu then tells Ji Hyun to relax because she will get good news soon. After kicking out the noisy customers bothering Nabi, Sung Wu wonders if Ji Hyun is also a hunter. He menacingly smiles and offers a meal for her. He is depressed about not having hunter customers. His food can improve one's abilities, but it is not entirely effective. He needs to throw out some good bait first. Sung Wu starts diagnosing Ji Hyun, 
and the aide can't help but wonder if this place is really a restaurant. Sung Woo then claims he's got the perfect dish for her. Ji Hyun is suspicious of Sung Woo. She wonders if he resolved the gate outbreak since she didn't get any updates on the gate opening. She remembers the manual on treating returnees. Sung Woo notices how Ji Hyun has finished organizing her thoughts. He explains to Ji Hyun that he is making clam chowder. Ji Hai Yoon gets shocked to see the monster clam shell. She calls Sung Woo crazy for feeding a hunter with monster meat. She tries to refuse to eat, but she remembers the manual. Sung Woo then continues cooking, following the normal recipe, until it tastes good to his taste. He then serves the dish to Ji Hai Yoon. Ji Hai Yoon takes her first bite with worry, but the dish tastes good. It was so refreshing that she removed her coat. She is glad to eat a monster dish. Sometime later, Kang Hyo attends the S-rank gate hearing. He keeps on reporting that a restaurant owner defeated the above-ranked monsters inside the gate, but they won't believe him. They get mad at the carefree Kang Hyo over the fact that a monstrous returnee is in the city. He then tells the manager not to make an enemy out of Sung Woo. The manager does know that provoking a returnee can destroy a city in an instant. Kang Hyok then tries to leave, but the manager gets mad. He then tells the manager that he is going to buy some land around the strongest returnee's restaurant. The manager looks like he agrees, but he smacks his clipboard on Kang Hyok. Meanwhile, Mime brought other hunters to the restaurant and warned them not to be rude. It seems like Sung Woo and Mime had a deal. Seeing Sung Woo, the other hunters thought that the one who saved them was someone who looked like a mad killer. They think he looks like an idol. Food got served, Everyone took a bite, and they all found the dishes delicious. Sung Woo is glad that he has more promoters now, making other hunters come to his restaurant. He plans to make them eat monster meat slowly and secretly. A day off comes for Sung Woo, and he decides to watch a movie. Just then, he hears a second-hand shop selling weapons. He also notices Nabi from a distance with a friend. He goes in to watch a movie. Meanwhile, the little girl moves around Nabi. The girl, Yoon Ha, tries to remember her mother's words when making new friends. She then decides to buy chicken skewers and offers one to Nabai. She asks to be friends, and Nabi is happy to have an earthling friend. The two became friends over a chicken skewer. Meanwhile, groans over the news that the president of the World Hunter Association will personally come to check on the situation in the sewer. It seems like there are some enemies to deal with in the area of the recent gate break. Kang Hyok activates his invisibility to move out. Min and his team also moved out. Mine immediately confronts the gangsters and takes their hands and gun. His men immediately arrest the gangsters, and a member reports that they have caught 13 so far. They continue to move and hunt the gangsters. Later, a restless manager gets surprised to hear the news of a power outage while Min and his team are scurrying through the sewers. It turns out there is an electric user who can absorb electricity. Mine assures the manager that the gangster will faint soon from an overload. The gangster then faints. Meanwhile, Soon Woo is peacefully watching a movie with a twist when the power suddenly goes out. The screening was abruptly stopped, leaving Sung Woo depressed. He asks the goddess for a reason and Gaia feels an itch. He returns to his restaurant to check his fridge and feels relieved that his district is not affected by the power outage. Feeling stressed, Sung Woo thought of relieving it by eating. He brings out an eye shaver and he plans to make shaved ice. Normally, it goes with sweet red beans and cereal on top. However, Sung Woo plans to make an alcohol-based shaved ice that his late father likes. He then starts making the shaved ice as normal. He then pulls alcohol from his inventory. He uses the 500-year-old alcohol he got from the devil and pours it on top of the shaved ice. He immediately tries it and can now understand his father's taste. Nabi returns and he brings Yuan Ha with him. Sung Wu asks if they want to eat something and the two stare at the ice shaver. Sung Wu then starts making non-alcoholic ones for them. Soon after, two tired hunters appear at Sung Woo's doorstep. Min has the urge to kill the branch manager, and Kang Hyok just feels tired. Sung Woo can see that the two lost it. They rush to take care of things because a high-ranking official was supposed to come, but didn't appear in the end. Sung Woo understands that it is worth getting mad about. Kang Hyok begs to eat something delicious today. Sung Woo thinks of making a healing dish and tells the two to wait. Meanwhile, Perot, an anthropomorphic creature, 
that forced his landing on Earth after getting caught in a rift is supported by Ji Hee Yoon with his heavy office work. He complains that food from the Earth doesn't sit well with him. He feels homesick, and Ji Hee Yoon finds it understandable. Just then, Ji Hee Yoon remembers something. Perot later goes to the warrior's restaurant. Seung Woo welcomes him, but he is not permitted inside the shop because of his fur. He confirms that Paro is homesick, and he gets mad that he is being treated as a counselor now. He does remember the Uruk species back at Terra, which are cruel and violent. However, the intelligent Pero might not be one of them. Nabi comes with various ingredients. Three hours later, there were no true results from all of the cooking they did. Pero apologizes for the inconvenience he has caused. Sung Wu swears that there is at least one dish that Pero might have liked. As Pero tries to leave, Nabi starts exercising to spend his energy on purpose. Nabi moves around and Pero finds him to be having fun. Sung Wu suggests Pero move around after finding out that all he does is sit and work. He reminds Pero not to neglect his inner animal or he will get sick. Sung Wu calls it lethargy and Pero's belly fat is the proof. Later, a tired Pero goes down after moving around. Nabi jumps on Piro to use massage magic, which can help burn fat faster. Sung Woo can't see that beast in Piro. He then thought of something to cook. French Burke baby food is from the warrior family in Terra. It is food for lazy kids that can increase their vigor and combative nature. Sung Woo starts by mincing the meat. He seasons it and turns it into meatballs. He applies magic originating from an ice dragon. He gives it to Pero with a sauce. Pero wolfs down the meatballs and he suddenly feels something. Sung Woo claims that something is coming. Pero suddenly transforms into a vicious looking creature. Pero groans with madness and Sung Woo leads him to attack a dummy. Nabi brings out more dummies and Pero lets out his animal instinct that night. The next day, Jiai Hyun comes to eat and informs Sung Woo that Pero took a sick leave. Sung Wu understands since Puro is an Uru, a well-known warrior clan. Ji Hyun thanks Sung Wu for his help. As Puro's guard, Ji Hyun insists on repaying Sung Wu. The chef menacingly smiles and brings out an ominous ingredient. Ji Hyun wants to repay the favor differently, but Sung Wu has already started cooking. Days later, Sung Wu breaks his knife because he doesn't control his strength. He checks his inventory, but there are no normal knives. He then decides to go outside. Because knives are limited, Sung Wu wants to go to the blacksmith instead. They arrive at a workshop called Crystal Valley, where he got an invitation from the city hall. Sio Naria, the guide, asks what Sung Wu needs. He asks for knives, but Nare misunderstands that Sung Wu wants a sword. However, what Sung Wu wants is a kitchen knife. Na Rei looks down on Sung Wu for ordering something simple in their prestigious shop. She then suggests making a custom order, to which Sung Wu agrees. Na Rei thinks Sung Wu can't afford it. Sung Wu asks for an elven artisan, and they go down using an elevator. Nabi worries because he is uncomfortable with elven's weapons. They arrive at a location where the temperature is cold. Sung Wu is surprised to see a female elf blacksmith and notices how talented she is. The elf tells them to wait and Sung Woo apologizes. She introduces herself as Alistair. Sung Woo realizes that she got her name from a matriarchal family. She then claims that there will be no refund if her work doesn't choose Sung Woo. And no one in Korea has been chosen so far. Sung Woo then asks for a kitchen knife, and Nabi is surprised by the price Alistar has presented. Alistar then suggests Sung Woo look around, but Sung Woo worriedly declines. Alistar laughs as she knows that her children won't choose Sung Woo. However, Sung Woo thinks of it as troublesome. Alistar pulls Sung Woo into her showroom. Sung Woo then apologizes in advance and points out that Alistar was at fault in the beginning. All the weapons in the showroom start shaking, and Alistar is freaking out. Alistar says not to treat her children like toys. She kneels on the floor, while Sung Woo reminds her of his warning. Ten years ago, the elven artisan had just completed one of their masterpieces, but somehow it flew to Sung Woo. The other elf laughed, saying that his masterpiece was nothing special. However, 
Eventually, the other elf shield also became attracted to Sung Wu. This happened six times to Sung Wu, and he gained a new title, the Elf Item Killer. Alistair was devastated over the loss of her child and became angry at Sung Wu for being a player. Sung Wu mentioned that he had already warned Alistair, but she continued to insult him, accusing him of seducing her 88 children. Alistair asked how many elf equipment Sung Wu owned, and he mentioned around 500. This worried Alistair because he did not use any of the weapons, and she was afraid that they would gather dust in storage and never see the light of day. She also worried that all of her 88 children would be lonely. Sung Wu appreciated all the weapons and decided to transfer them to the suitable owner when the time was right, but he also decided to keep them. Suddenly, he saw a blue gauntlet that was not for him. He knew that this gauntlet was for Nabi, and when Nabi used it, it looked very cute. Sung Woo took a photo of it. Meanwhile, Alistair was crying over her children while making a knife for Sung Woo. She finished her craft and gave the kitchen knife to Sung Woo, who loved it. Alistair worried that her children wouldn't find suitable owners, but Sung Woo assured her that he had a plan for them. The next day, Sung Woo's restaurant posted a bizarre challenge, and the reward would be an Isaac certified artisan's weapon. A lot of hunter was gathered outside of Sung Woo's restaurant. Sung Woo explained to them about the challenge, which each person will be given exactly one serving. And the challenge consists of three stages. And if any people fail to complete one of the stage, they unable to attempt the next stage, time limit will be 30 minutes. Each challenger have to pay 100 million won. Those hunter think is worth the price since the weapon is worth more than the price. Those hunter mocking Sung Woo for ruining his own business for giving away such weapon. The first challenger sit on the seat and his ability is endurance, which he is confident that he can completed the challenge and tell Sung Woo to serve him the bizarre food. Sung Woo cooked the food elegantly like a gourmet and it looks very delicious. And the hunter was wonder why this food is considered as bizarre food. When he took a bite, suddenly his face changed in the world of Terra, the better the food looks, the worse it tastes. Sung Woo explained to the hunters that the ingredient he used wasn't starch, which is like a potato sprout and contains poison. The hunter found the food disgusting, and some even scolded Sung Woo, warning that they could die from eating poisonous food. However, Sung Woo assured them that he was an expert and wouldn't make them die. In fact, the ingredient he used was a top-tier ingredient that increased poison resistance, making it a quack two-star dish. The hunter even wrote on the table with soy sauce, using his finger, declaring that the food was not of this world. Despite their initial reluctance, some hunters were still curious and attempted the challenge. But one by one, they all failed to complete it. Yuna was impressed by the full piggy bank, but Sung Wu was disappointed that no one was able to pass the challenge. He had gone out of his way to make the poison resistance food because in Terra, poison resistance was a top priority. However, on Earth, people seemed to care less about it since technology had advanced enough to use gas masks. But what if the gas masks broke? Then they would be in trouble. Suddenly, Yuen has bodyguard arrived to take her home. However, she insisted on playing with Nabi a bit longer and asked for some more time. While they waited, the bodyguard became interested in the bizarre challenge and asked Sung Woo if he could try it out. Sung Woo served the dish to the bodyguard, who thanked him for going out of his way to make a dish for poison resistant. As he ate the food, it tastes bad, but he realized that he had to eat slowly. Just like in the game, where taking damage slowly is better than taking all the burst damage at once. Sung Woo was happy that the bodyguard found the right way to clear the challenge and cheered him on to finish the food. The bodyguard was able to complete the challenge and was glad that he gained poison resistance. Sung Woo decided to reward him with a weapon and asked what kind of hunter he was. The bodyguard mentioned that he had tried to obtain a weapon from Alistair before, but had a zero selection rate. Sung Woo reassured him that he didn't need to worry and that he could give him the weapon. He explained that was the purpose of the challenge. The bodyguard had been looking for something he wanted before, but was rejected, a belt. He was happy to receive the belt, which was a magic armor that extended from the belt and covered the entire body when the spell was uttered. He thought that this kind of armor was the best when responding to emergencies. The bodyguard was so happy, but he still had a poker face. You know, was tired and sleeping with Nobby, so the bodyguard carried her home. The next day, more hunters arrived to take on the challenge. They drank a spicy sauce to numb their taste buds and get themselves ready. Despite knowing their motivation, Song Wu served them anyway. 
The hunters tasted the food, and it was terrible. They still couldn't complete the challenge. The following day, Ji Hyun visited the restaurant. She declined the bizarre food challenge and simply wanted to try Sung Woo's regular food. She also thought he had a handsome face and was about to admire him when she noticed that he had gained weight. Seong Woo was surprised that he had put on some extra pounds. Sung Woo was surprised that he had gained weight after becoming a transcendent despite not gaining any weight when he was a warrior. Ji Hyun asked Sung Woo about his recent diet and he admitted to having eight pieces a day while watching movies. Ji Hyun was shocked and thought that is a one-way ticket to hospitalization. Sung Woo felt guilty and cooked an oversized carbonara for Ji Hyun, secretly hoping she would also gain weight. Later that night, Sung Woo and Nabi discussed their weight gain, and Sung Woo envied how cats remained cute even when they were fat. Nabi tried to comfort him by saying he was cute too, but it only made Sung Woo feel worse. Determined to lose weight, Sung Woo prepared a dish with Nabi's help, but when he ate it, he felt a heavy, punching feeling in his stomach and was sent flying. However, he was happy that he had completed the ultimate diet dish. The next day, Ji Hyun visited the restaurant again and was surprised to see Sung Woo had slimmed down to his normal self. He told her he had eaten a dish that had helped him lose weight, and soon, all the customers were asking him for the secret recipe. Obesity is a common enemy of modern people and the root cause of many health problems. There are few people who don't care about their body and appearance, but there isn't a single person who doesn't worry about their weight. The customers looked at Sung Woo with evil eyes and demanded that he reveal his secret. He told them to calm down, but it only made them more aggressive, and they even told him to shut up and take their money. Sung Woo explained to them that the food was only for hunter users and not for normal humans. Ji Hyun was happy that she was a hunter and could try the food, but Sung Woo disappointed her by saying that it was dangerous and could harm her body. Ji Hyun cried over it and became determined to obtain a body that could withstand the dangerous food, so she challenged the bizarre food. But Sung Woo was surprised that she still wanted to lose weight, despite having a good figure already. She sighed and explained that he didn't understand the feelings of normal people about weight while scolding Sung Woo. He thought it was an excuse, which made her even more angry. After the argument, she demanded the bizarre food but without any weapon reward at the regular price. This made Sung Woo angry, and he hoped he could make the most disgusting, bizarre food ever for her. The customers felt sad that they had to exercise and diet to lose weight, which made Sung Woo worry about them. He shared warrior calisthenics, which was Nabi's usual training, in hopes that it could quickly help them lose weight. The customers tried the workout outside the restaurant, which was embarrassing as they had to shout meow at any moment. Sung Woo teased Ji Hyun to meow louder. Ji Hyun eventually meowed louder. Min was ready for something new, and Sung Woo was glad to see how much he had changed since they first met. Sung Woo also wondered how Kang Hyok was doing. Mine explained that Kang Hyok had been working night shifts and had been struggling to rest and maintain his ranking. He complained about needing more rest but was currently at home drinking. Sung Woo continued to prepare the next challenge food for mine and he easily completed it and received a knife as a reward. Sung Woo told him to try it and when Min threw the knife on the cutting board, it infused with an electrical field and returned to his hand. Mine was thrilled to have obtained such a great weapon, and Sung Woo took the opportunity to embarrass him by taking a picture. Meanwhile, Kang Hyok was drunk and lying on his bed. He fell off the bed and angrily smashed the floor, wishing he could become a returnee like Sung Woo so he could excel at many things and become stronger. He eventually fell asleep. Sung Woo had been keeping an eye on Kang Hyok and understood his situation. He began to think of an amazing plan to help Kang Hyok. Nine years ago, when the gates first opened and Monster began invading, there were people who disappeared. After three years, those who had disappeared began returning one by one. They said they had been living in a different world and had gained immense strength. The general public reacted to these returnees with jealousy. Suddenly, Kang Hyok woke up in an empty space and wondered if he was dreaming. Then he heard a voice saying, Welcome to Terra, warrior from another world, and it turned out to be Sung Wo sitting on an office chair. Kang Hyok was surprised to see Seung Woo there, and Sung Woo continued with the typical isekai speech. However, Kang Hyok thought it was nonsense and demanded an explanation. Sung Woo explained that usually, it would be a goddess serving him, 
but he made it work anyway and asked Kang Hyok to try and understand the situation. Kang Hyok thought that he had died due to drinking too much. As usually, Isekai stories happen after a person dies. Sung Woo acknowledged his point but explained that this was different from the typical Isekai story and informed him that he was not dead but would eventually die if he continued drinking. Kang Hyok asked, why he was sent to another world. Sung Woo replied that he had wanted to come to Terra and had overheard Kang Hyok complaining while he was drunk. So he took the opportunity. This angered Kang Hyok, who felt that Sung Woo had trespassed in his house and taken his complaints too seriously. However, Kang Hyok soon realized that it was not a bad deal after all, since it presented an opportunity for him to become stronger. He asked Sung Woo, if he could be given some kind of cheat ability, as is often the case in Isekai stories. Sung Woo was surprised that Kang Hyok knew more about Isekai than him, but he apologized and told him that he did not receive any cheat abilities or powerful weapons. Kang Hyok became angry at Sung Woo for trying to hide something, but Sung Woo assured him that he was telling the truth and wished him the best, saying that Kang Hyok, being a hunter with more experience, was better prepared than Song Wu was when he first started in Terra. Song Wu then sent Kang Hyok to another world like a god and gave him the typical final word. Please save the world. While looking smug, he further explained to Kang Hyok that three days on Earth were equivalent to a few months in Terra, which was essentially a cheat ability already given to him. Sung Wu had created a system for Kang Hyok, just like in typical Isekai stories, and hoped that Kang Hyok would do well in his new world. One day, as Kang Hyok was perusing the adventurer quest posting board, a kobold named Kuze approached him and asked him to eat together. Kang Hyok insulted the food in this world, saying that it tasted terrible. But Kuzi teased him, saying that he had been eating it just fine until now. Kuz then mentioned the buff effect that the food could give them and expressed his excitement to eat those kinds of dishes. However, Kang Hyok argued that cooking was about taste, not just buffs, which angered a lot of people in Terra World. Kuz told him to shut up so as not to cause any trouble. Kang Hyok silently ate the food, and suddenly, the system panel popped out, giving him an emergency quest that he had to eat a four-star dish within a week.